the time of year for foggy lenses and it's the time of year for dead yellow jackets. I've been going around and killing them. About this time of year, mid-May, I have to walk around all the barns and all the houses with a wasp spray I have right here. And kill everybody. Go watch my new video. Is it up? Yep. Two minutes ago. Oh, okay. So go to London's vlog. It's London Smith. And she's got her, our, uh, she's starting to vlog a lot more. And she's got her trip to Disney and Florida when I went to preach. So when I'm killing yellow jackets, you guys tell me if you do the same, but you know what's tricky is killing yellow jackets and wasp. And you do it, it's easy to see them under the, you know, the overhangs of the barn, but it's under the chairs where those suckers are sneaky. Under the chairs. And last year, I remember I killed them all, and then I went and sat down with Baby Maverick last year, and they all came up from one of these wooden chairs right here. So I need to, they're all in a disarray because of the construction in here, right? But I need to always remember to check the chairs. What I need to do, I hate those things. I need to get somebody else with the spray and I pull the chair back on each of these chairs because they love wooden chairs and they love to make their nest right where your feet go. I can't see anything yet, but those suckers are, let me check on them. I wonder where they work. It's always the wood, right? They love wood. And right now, because of the barn, we have wood everywhere. But I've seen them, I've seen them get like, under this, these parts of the chair, backs. And you gotta get them now because this is the time of year they're building their nest and then they're not really in attack mode. They don't really jump out and start attacking. So you gotta get them now because then those nests get bigger and more of them go to it and then by June, oof, you're gonna get hit. I got hit last year, y'all. I probably said it on the Smiths, but I got hit while I was carrying math, running to the house and they were just hitting me. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the uh, how our pollinator stuff's doing. It's looking great, huh? This stuff's just going crazy here. I realized later I have too many white, pink, and blue, and purple, and I need to get more red and yellow. So I've got my yellow here and my red here, not enough of it. But more stuff is still coming up and then I'll show you the garden for an update over here. This wisteria vine on both of these sides is doing great. A lot of pollinating stuff in here. Getting some really cool blooms going. Uh, my, all my herbs crushing it, doing really good. The only problem is some of this mint, I have to, I've already cut this mint back two or three times just to allow like a rosemary to come underneath here. And the basil gets huge. I'm going to cut that today and then check this out. That is going to be good. I'm already getting some little cucumbers in here. See, there's a lot, tons of little baby cucumbers here. And then there's a decent sized one already. 
So this is gonna, this is part of the reason I spread these out is because I'm gonna let these just kind of grow all over these, these beds. And then I got this guy, just, I'm gonna kind of redirect it so it starts going back up. This is another squash that Lincoln planted that's gonna get not a lot of sun, but Lincoln wanted that there. And then these are some of my wild grapes, which are starting to see the fruit from. These are muscadine, which I have not grown before. And then these are like Mustang. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with these grapes in a raised bed. That's gonna be interesting. More of my flower stuff. Look at these, so beautiful. My little oak trees that we grew from the acorns from the Smiths that you guys saw. I'll keep these in pots and eventually transfer them to the greenhouse when it gets colder this year. All right, some advice. Uh, these sunflowers. This is my first year to grow sunflowers and I'm just not doing a great job. I don't really know what's going on here with this stuff. So comment below. Uh, these these big old flowers just close up like that and, and I, I don't really know. I just, I need some help. I don't really know what to trim here because it's not, I, all my other flowers are so uh, self-explanatory. But the sunflowers, like what's going, what's going on with this stuff? Right? Uh, tomatoes crushing it. And I go in, I like to, I like to clean out of the bottom of my tomatoes and make sure that there's nothing growing into the dirt. But these, <laughs> I've been doing this literally like every day and they just, every day I'm home and they are just kind of growing everywhere. I got, if you guys remember, I got one, two, three, four, five different species. So all different species of tomatoes, all different varieties. And they're all growing at different rates. In fact, this one, see, I need to work on this because there's this guy under here, this tomato plant. And this, this guy, this cherry tomato is just growing all over it. So I need to trim him up to make sure he's getting enough sunlight. My blackberries are slow, slow coming, slow growing. And that's normal because it's not hot enough yet. These need some serious sunlight, some serious heat. I uh, just start doing better. So you can see the new growth in here. But uh, just kind of slow. So that's that's everything, but I'm very happy. Very happy with what's going on here and um, using the, the compost, which is always so helpful. The compost is still here, I'll show you. It's still full of worms. So we're, we're, uh, let's see if I can find any. Here, watch this. I'll close this up and I'll spin it. Now I can see. Full of worms. This whole thing, they're everywhere in here. So that's doing really good. I love composting. And chickens are out. Helping me out today. The girls are rocking, cleaning up my bugs. What's up, Diamond? And have I showed you my doors yet? Look, got the X's on the doors. Come on, that's cool. With a little landing pads right here. Come on, so exciting. And then this side, got the X's on this door and this is a Dutch door. And the little porch here. It's coming along. I can't take you in there because they just uh, they just sealed all the wood, so it's 
doesn't smell good in there. It's hard to be in there. But that's kind of the, uh, the quick update and excited about all the progress. And it, I don't know about you guys, comment below, but it is getting sticky here. It's getting just, you can just feel that mugginess. But the good news is we've been getting a lot of rain. So a lot of rain, muggy, that's my update. Love you guys, yee yee. Oh, okay. Don't pick the flowers. Water in for Dada. Water the water the flowers, buddy. Good job. Good job, Bubba. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Oh, <laughs> did she spray your face? <laughs> did you get your face? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. You okay? You're right. Get you. Don't look at yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, let's turn it off. It is a beautiful day in Carlsbad, New Mexico. It has been a, an adventurous couple days. I drove with a friend down to Lubbock, no, down to El Paso to go speak at an event. She was speaking at an event there for a church on the five solas. So she was speaking on the glory of God. We drove out Friday evening, Thursday evening. <laughs> we stayed in Fort Stockton, Texas stayed the night there that was interesting drove later to El Paso she spoke then we drove in the night to Carlsbad now we're driving from Carlsbad to Lubbock where I am speaking okay I finally got that all together for you guys now I'm driving to Lubbock where I'm speaking at a lost moms event um, and so I'm looking forward to going and speaking there but it's been such a fun road trip and just an adventure the whole way so I'll take you guys along with me to go speak so in the barn restoration we should call it Ramon, we're, we're to the fun part now, man. Uh, this has always been fun for you, but this is, uh, it's getting creative. Like this is, this is an art form now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> put your thinking cap on. Yeah, you've been doing, you've had your thinking cap on for three months. I want to show what I, when I said I got to grab my camera, I want to show everybody what's going on here. So this is, these are old, these are pieces left over from the house build. And these are from Warsaw, Indiana, from an old barn, right? So we found these outside of this barn, and I said, hey, Ramon, can you make me a table with these things? <laughs> so this is, what, this is what I do to him. But he loves me for it, don't you? Kind of. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I come over here, and this is what we got going on. He's going to try to use this old piece with this, right? And use this old piece and attach it where he's written he's drawn that line right there and this will be a, a table that goes in there along the stairs right yes sir and that end attaches to the wall yes and then this will be the top of the table that or i was thinking about possibly using that as a leg but i don't know if i want to use that somewhere else i mean it's too cool to not use yeah somewhere else I'm trying to figure out how i'm gonna do it <laughs> That's always been the issue. So let me let me walk inside because I don't think I've shown everybody what you've been doing for the, at least the last three weeks or so. So first of all, we got these these little end tables he's made. He's also going to make a bed, and we you remember the bookshelf that he made? Here's our uh, our kitchen going on here. Got all this the ceiling tiles he's put in. I don't, I don't even know where those came from. Do you know where those came from? Those, I believe, came from Indiana also. Indiana also, okay. Yeah, uh, Billy and uh, Sergio wound up knocking that out while I was working on other stuff. Uh, Pretty cool stuff, man. That's old. Um, he has built, uh, put X's on all the ends of our cabinets here before we, we get to paint these cabinets. So, 
I mean, this guy, well, all these guys have been working relentlessly for months. So what we're doing, what we're dealing with, first of all, look at these stairs. Man, it's just a masterpiece, Ramon. You and Billy and Sergio, what a masterpiece. It's just a matter of, uh, when you start getting into it, ideas pop into my head and <laughs> make it work. One board at a time. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to deal with now is, and this is the handrail, we got it, we got it, we, take that off because we had this whole thing sealed anyway um, handrail so that you don't get splinters see isn't that a good idea all every bit of this stairway custom so what he's doing out there what I showed y'all we're thinking right here right so that end the leg here the and that long piece here yeah because I was thinking if I can get that leg here just attach it there probably build like a, some kind of blocking system for it to hold on to right there. Yeah. It'll be supported up against the wall. I don't know, I think it'll look cool. Yeah, man. And Joe's gonna put us a, a outlet right there. Yes. So we just run a little lamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got your... So, so check this out. This, this is where TV is gonna go. And then Ramon built this TV table. Or at least he's working on it. Yeah. So these are... Put it all together, get shelves in there for you. Yeah, it's gonna have shelf in here, shelves. And then these are the, these are left over from the beams in the, the main house. And this is, this is left over ceiling material, right? Uh, beam material. Beam material, I nice up here. Yeah, this material right here. Well, I'm gonna change the ground to a flat stock. I think it looks a lot better. I like it too. Yeah. Yeah, this is good stuff, and so we're, Working on this, uh, I say we as if I'm actually working on it. He's working on this. <laughs> You're the one giving me the ideas. <laughs> I just come on here and say, hey, how about this? Uh, so then we're going to do a TV here, but Ramon's going to build uh, a cover for the TV. It's going to slide down like that, probably put a painting on the outside of it, and then it'll slide back up on a pulley system somehow. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> I have an idea on how to do it though. Oh man, it's good. this is gonna be so cool. If, if it looks different to anyone, it's because it's been sealed. So it's got a little bit of shine on it. You see a little, touch, just a touch of shine to protect the wood. Yeah, and this right here, it should, it should go back to normal probably about, in about a year or so. That lose the darkness a little bit to it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to seal it with the other stuff. I think it would take away from the wood. Yeah. This actually looks a lot better, in my opinion. So also what this allows us to do is be colorful with like a couch or anything else that goes in the house could be uh, colorful since there's, you know, it's a lot of uh, wood tone. So yeah, man. It's, it's coming great. along. <laughs> it's coming along. Yeah, it's coming along great. And I, these are all the extra pieces I've been saving them for maybe bookends or something. Something like that for the books here. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yes. You're the man, Ramon. Come on. You know, Paul came over here the other day and he reminded me. He's like, hey, man, we haven't shown any the gym on the Smiths. And so I was like, oh, you're right. So if I haven't shown everybody, the gym has been operational. I've been using this every day. And so that right outside this door, that's where I was talking to, Mar to Ramon, right on outside there. So the gym has been the first thing that's been finished and fully operational. So, yeah, I, I told the guys, I was like, hey man, while you are working, just go ahead and finish this gym so I can get that stuff out of the, the old storage section of the barn and start using it. So yeah, I, think it I think it turned out great. And when y'all, you know, the Smith viewers watch this and y'all start coming to stay here, you can work out when you come to stay here. Just wanted to do a quick recap of the weekend. We had such a special time. I had a special time traveling with my friend Alexandra, went to watch her speak on the glory of God. And then I got to go to the Missing Moms Luncheon and speak just all about suffering and persevering through suffering. And it was any event like that is emotional. 
because I kept looking out as I was speaking into the crowd and I just kept seeing women with just tears in their eyes and my heart just goes out to them because I could tell that some of them were very, very fresh in their grief. And um, it was just a wonderful lunch and a wonderful organization to be able to connect with other moms who have lost a child or who have lost their mother or who have been trying to conceive or who just don't have a good relationship with their children or their mom. So if you guys want to learn more about it, it's missingmoms.org. I can have Paul put that down there. And this might be something that you would like to attend. This was their sixth year and it was, it was a blessing and an honor to be able to speak with all of those ladies. So check them out. And then we came home and went to church and had a great, a great mother's day um, with my mom. She was in town. So she went to church with us and we just had Mexican food and, and hung out with the kids all day and um, just kind of had a, a lazy Mother's Day weekend, but overall it was it was a great, <laughs> very packed few days. So I hope you guys had a blessed Mother's Day and I talked about Mother's Day on my Arise this past episode and, and we also talked about modesty as a Christian. So if you guys wanna head over to my Arise with Amber page, we moved all of those Arise videos. If you don't know, you should know by now, but we moved all of those over to its own channel, Arise with Amber. It's also available in podcast form. We also have the river shirts which we're going to take some photos today i'm going to set this phone down to show you guys these are the new river shirts for this year this is actually our sixth shirt as well so it says live like rib and yee yee and all of the proceeds from these shirts go to the river kelly fund so that we can give back to those people in need Today is probably your last day to get them. The last day is May 16th that you can pre-order and then they will ship out probably the first week of June. So we're also raising money. I hate to ask people for money, but it's for a good cause. And every every penny that goes to the River Kelly Fund is, is given out to other organizations. So we always do a big push on his birthday. I'm not gonna get emotional. On May 16th, it's his birthday. So if you feel so inclined to donate to the River Kelly Fund, you can donate at riverkellyfund.org. Gosh, I didn't think that I was gonna, it just never goes away, okay? It never goes away. The grief never goes away. It's always just bubbling right below the surface, but um, you can go to riverkellyfund.org. We never ask for more than $3. We always try to do $3 because he's forever three. So if you find it in your heart to donate $3 or, or even a dollar, 50 cents, whatever, um, all the way up to whatever you feel in your heart that you would like to donate. We will graciously steward that to help spread light, love, and joy in honor of our son. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you guys. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm not, I don't want to say all the like and subscribe stuff. We just appreciate you and we hope that you like what we're doing and we just want to be a family of encouragement to others. And I, I pray that we do that. I pray that we <clears throat> live out our faith daily for, for you guys to see and also pray that we can make you laugh along the way as well. So we'll see you guys next video. Bye.